Hello everyone. Hope your Monday is uh, going well and uh, staying dry out there with some of the rain around and stuff like that. Well, we're going to do something different today. I, I like the series we've been doing, but I want to focus in a little bit more on uh, Holy Week, uh, this Holy Week. And, and uh, uh, I, I think that uh, I found a, a devotional that I, I started to do it personally, and I, I just love it. And I, I think that uh, it'll be better for us than, than the other one. We, we, we basically, we're going to be reviewing the same passages that we talked about last week uh, again for the next few days, but uh, uh, I hope it's all right with you. I, I sort of changed my mind, and, and I really like this uh, series. It's called. It's still from the U Version Bible app, and it, it's called Journey to the Cross. And it's it's done by a group I've never heard of before. It's a twenty four seven prayer, something like that. Uh, it's a group that uh, uh, has some good stuff out there, and I, I uh, like I said, I'm not super familiar with it, but I love this devotional. I like the format. Uh, of it, because really what it is, is it leads us through uh, this, you know, the, the uh, Holy Week activities and uh, sort of they call it, it's called Journey to the Cross. And there's some good stuff in here and, and leading us to prayer. Uh, really, as you walk through the story, uh, taking moments to pray specifically about various things. And, and I think you'll really, really enjoy it. I, like I said, I, I think there's uh, uh, some good stuff to really, I mean, during our, our Lenten study, we, we've kind of focused in kind of big picture and some of those kinds of things, looked at, at these passages uh, in detail and over and over again over a period of days. And it, it's really been good. But this focuses in more on the story and leading us through it and sort of picking out from it what uh, what we need to hear. So, so we'll begin uh, with it. And, and like I said, it, it, it sort of walks through it and we'll walk through it together. Uh, today's is called The Jar. Uh, this is a story that we did look at uh, sort of in, in uh, earlier on in our Lenten study, but uh, uh, let's, let's begin. It says, Jesus, as I, and so we begin in prayer, Jesus, as I join you today on your journey to the cross, prepare my heart to participate with you in the dark shadows of Good Friday and the bright dawn of Easter Sunday. And then it says, pause and pray. So let's do that. Lord, uh, help us on this journey, this holy week, Lord, help us to devote this time to you. As I talked about yesterday in the service, that uh, really to focus in on making a decision if we've never done that before, or or really to, to again open ourselves up to, to how you might be leading us in our life and what decisions maybe we need to, to make a decision to grow deeper with you. Uh, whatever it might be, Lord, speak to us during this week and give us ears to hear from you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it continues on. It's four days before Jesus' death. He's relaxing in Bethany, just outside Jerusalem. Something shocking and prophetic is about to take place. And it says, read Matthew 26, 6 to 13. And it says, while Jesus was in Bethany in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar a very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. The perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will be also will also be told in memory of her. Now, continuing on, it says, perfume poured out on Jesus' head in the story was astoundingly precious. This uh, is made, according to the gospels of Mark and John, from pure nard, which comes from a plant that only grows in the Himalayas. It had traveled 3,500 miles, and it's worth... 300 denarii, uh, a year's wages, and yet it, it was all but it, it was all emptied out upon Jesus's head. The extravagance is, is breathtaking. Again, we talked about that earlier in, in our uh, Lenten series, uh, but this is the you know, extravagance is breathtaking. The whole house would have been filled with the, with the fragrance. Jesus's body may still have been carrying hints of this very scent upon the cross. Isn't that interesting to, to think about? I'm not sure where I thought about that uh, that idea, but but his body might have still had that scent, and and who knows? I mean, it, it might have been a blessing to him, as he's uh, there on the cross. This act of love, 
uh, div- given to, to him. It says, what is the most valuable thing I could pour out upon Jesus today? Is he inviting me to waste some of my precious time in worship or to relinquish a particular relationship or to surrender something I own in order to demonstrate my, my love for him? Uh, let's just, it says now pause and pray. So let's do that. Uh, Lord, show us what we can do for you uh, today. Lord, show us how we can take a few minutes in worship to you, in praise to you, that we might be able to pour out uh, on you in some way figuratively uh, as, as we think about entering into this holy week. Lord, give us wisdom. Help us to know what we can do in, in, in worship to be thankful because you are worthy of our worship. You are so good. You are so faithful. You bless us in countless ways. Lord, we just praise you today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It goes on. It says, when the disciples were discussing how to feed the 5,000 people, Philip pointed out that it would cost more than 200 denarii to do so. In other words, 200 denarii is what it would cost to feed all the people over there. Uh, I think it says one bite uh, of, of food. So, so uh, you know, how, it says this little, you know, it goes on, it says this little jar of perfume is worth 300 denarii. Uh, and so that means that it could have fed probably uh, more than, than, than five, more than that 5,000 people that were fed uh, that day. Or as we know, there's probably more people there than the 5,000, 5,000 men. And so uh, there's, there's women and children and all that. So, so just think about how this, how much more could have been fed like this. It says, no wonder the disciples were indignant and said that it could have fed the poor. Uh, Lots and lots and lots of people could have been fed by that. Now it asks the question, does my passion for justice and my desire for results sometimes make worship seem self-indulgent? How might I waste a little money, efficiency, or credibility for Christ's glory today? So let's continue in prayer. Uh, it says, please pause and pray. So let's do that. Lord, uh, you know, this, this amazing gift that was given to you, Lord, it's, it's, it's uh, phenom- phenomenal to think about how it's over a year's wages. Uh, that's a lot of money. Could have fed 5,000 or more people, Lord. We, we just think about how seldom we are extravagant in our love for you. Lord, help us today, help us this week, this holy week, Lord, to pause and give to you whatever it is that we can give, uh, maybe even our, our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, Lord. Lead us in that. Help us to, to worship you, to love you extravagantly. You are w- worth that. And, and really so much more. So Lord, lead us in that today and in the days ahead. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, then it continues. We often talk about Jesus anointing us to do great things, but in this story, we see that we can anoint Jesus too. The name Jesus Christ literally means Jesus, the anointed one. As we begin this journey towards Easter, let us anoint him as our Christ with the costly sacrifice of exorbitant gratitude. I like that. That's that's really good. And then we have a prayer here. It says, Jesus, I love you with all my heart, all my soul, and all my strength, but I'm I'm sorry that so often I give you the least of my time, the last of my money, and the leftovers of my worship. This week, I want to pour the best of myself out for you, knowing that you will soon pour out your very life for me. Well, let's continue in prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for... Uh, this devotional, this lesson on how we we need to be extravagant in our love for you. Help us to do that, Lord. Help us to be intentional, especially this week, this week of of, of all weeks, this, this holy week, where as we walk further in this story, we'll see again and again all you, you're doing, you did for us. And Lord, we, we need to be grateful for that. We need to praise you and worship you for that. So Lord, help us in that endeavor. Thank you, Lord, for your presence with us. Thank you for a good day of worship yesterday. Lord, we just pray your continued blessings on us and uh, continue to be with all those that are sick, those that are hurting, those that just need encouragement from you, Lord. Just bless them with your presence, with your healing where it's needed. Uh, Just everything, Lord. You are so good and so faithful to be there for us, to do for us what we need you to do. And Lord, we just give you glory today. Uh, Lord, just be with each one. Just uh, surround them with your presence. In Jesus' name we pray and ask all this. 
Amen. Amen. Well, Lord bless you. Uh, have a great rest of your week or rest of your day. We'll be back tomorrow and uh, we'll share again from this, uh, this great new devotional. But uh, we'll see you later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.